Today, the subject is things that aren't salvation. I want to read some scriptures here. Starting off with Matthew 12, 31. Jesus speaking says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Y'all read that many, 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 many times. And I, it's been taught a few times and people have quoted it in front of me. And, and the, it's as if the sentence or the verse doesn't even start to this part. But the blasphemy of the, against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But just think of what he just said. All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven. And he doesn't state a condition. He doesn't say all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven once you do your penance. Once you get in the right denomination. Once you beg for forgiveness. It doesn't even say that. It doesn't even say ask for forgiveness. It just says all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Period. End of subject. That's the, That's a huge statement. It's never focused on, ever. And I ask you to ask yourself, has that ever been focused on in anything, anywhere you were ever taught? If it was, I'm, you're a small minority of people. And that just amazed me. I've been reading that for years of my adult life, and it was never focused on. He just said it. And there's only one thing. So what do we focus on? We focus on, well, you know, blessing the Holy Ghost, that's pretty broad. It's not. Blaspheming the Holy Ghost is just denying Jesus. It's just saying that he isn't who he says he is and he didn't do what he said he did. That's all it is. That's blaspheming the Holy Ghost because Jesus is the Holy Ghost. And you see that if you saw a recent couple of studies I did on that. I'm also going to address that issue right now. We're going to go to Luke 12, 18. This is an account of the same discussion he was having. And it has a little bit more to it. So I wanted to include this in here because it makes a couple of points. But it doesn't say that first statement. He doesn't lead with the statement, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven. That part in Matthew goes on to say what I'm about to read in Luke. But Luke says something else. So check this out. Listen to this. Jesus speaks. He says, also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men. That's key. Keep that in mind. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him Shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God? He said me, and then he said the Son of Man. Try to hold that thought. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. This is the enigmatic language that Jesus uses all the time. He speaks of himself in the third person all the time for purposes of identity. And I have this theory, I won't get into it right now, but I have this theory that he spoke that way so that the scriptures wouldn't be destroyed by men, by paganistic men, church systems, traditions of men that believe in uh, lies like the Trinity and things like that, because they can manipulate it when he talks like this. But for a person who is seeking God with their heart and has a benefit of the spirit living within can see what this says. He is saying, whosoever shall blaspheme the Holy Ghost. That's what that means. Whosoever shall deny the Holy Ghost, shall deny me, shall deny that I am God and I did what I did. That's the only unforgivable sin. All the sins are forgiven. Remember, he said that earlier. All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Shall be. It was in the future because he hadn't gone to the cross yet. Once he went to the cross, he took away all the sins of men. But if you deny that and you say, I don't believe you did that, how can you receive that? That's the only unforgivable sin. It's blasphemy. It's denying. Blasphemy, I know there's all kinds of definitions for it, but what it really means is just to den deny your God, to deny the fact that he is who he is and he did what he did. That's all it is. It's real simple. It's not going around saying you're God. It's not going around having bad doctrine so you can stop fighting with each other about all the details. You know, I wish we all agreed, but we don't. We seem to be designed to disagree. Another video you can look at. But the thing is, is he's making it clear here. And I hope that when I put the scripture up here, you can read it while I'm talking. And you can see what I'm talking about. Whosoever shall confess me, the Holy Ghost, God, whosoever confesses God, the Son of Man will confess before the angels. But he that denieth, he that blasphemes me before men shall be denied. So you deny him, you're denied. 
You're denying yourself. That's all you're doing. You deny Jesus as far as who he is and what he's done. That's what it is. That's the only sin. That's the only sin that's unforgivable because it's self-condemnation. It's saying, no thanks. I don't want your forgiveness. You already have it. He forgave the entire world. John made that clear in both the book of John and in 1 John. All our sins are taken away. It's just that if you, in essence, say, that's okay, I don't want you, God, that's not forgivable. Because it's not a matter of you're a bad person. It's a matter of you don't want what God gave you. Because this is not about good and bad people. We know there's only one that's good, and that's God. And he forgives everyone, or I should just say the bad, which is all of us. So, just continue on from there. Denying Jesus is blaspheming the Holy Ghost. That's all that is. It's as simple as that. He is the Holy Ghost. He is the Holy Spirit. And he goes on to say, And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. That illustrates it even more. If you speak a word against the Son of Man, that will be forgiven you. He's saying that you're, you're going to be forgiven every single thing you can do. Speaking a word against him isn't going to get you condemned. It shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. So he just punctuates it. He just says it again. He comes back and says it. He's explaining what he said earlier. He's showing us who he is. Remember, we're talking about things that are not salvation. In Luke 6, 36 and 37, Jesus is speaking. He says, be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. So see, he's preaching the old covenant and he says, all you got to do is just be just like God. Be perfect like God. And everything will be okay. You're merciful like him. And I include all these scriptures. But he talks about how you're to be kind to the cruel. You're to lend and not and not expect anything in return. He says all these things that no one can live by. And I guarantee your teachers aren't going by this. If someone stiffs them out of debt, they send a collection agency after them. That's what you got to do, folks. It's just reality. And I don't, I don't begrudge them for that. But if they go around telling you that you got to forgive everyone perfectly and do exactly what Jesus says... They're just lying. They're just lying. Maybe they're lying to themselves if they believe it, but they're lying. So he says, be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. So, okay, be just like God, just like the serpent told us in the garden. Just be like God. Everything will be okay. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Again, right? Easy? You never judge, right? You never judge. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Another one. No Christian does that. I'm sure none of us do. And then finally, forgive and ye shall be forgiven. So the old covenant, Jesus taught the old covenant. Be like God. Do everything perfectly, and then God will reward you. He'll forgive you after you do what only he can do. I know that's a hard concept for a lot of people to grasp, but it was the hardest thing for me to grasp when I realized the grace of God and how real it is. But the simple fact is, it wasn't that he was lying, it wasn't that he was contradicting himself, is that he was made of a woman, made under the law. Jesus was teaching what he had to teach because he was the one that was going to fulfill it. He was going to say, do this impossible thing. Do this impossible thing or things won't work out for you because he knows how stubborn we are. So then he goes and does the impossible thing and then rises up from the dead and says, do you trust me? Do you believe me now? Mankind, oh stubborn man, oh stiffneck man that you are, will you trust me now that I told you from the beginning you can't do it? Would you just believe me and just put your trust in me and then you can have my righteousness bestowed upon you? So he makes it clear. And you might say, well, no, Mark, it just says right there, forgiven you shall be forgiven. That's Jesus' words. You have to obey that old covenant. Remember, he taught the old covenant. He ushered in the new covenant. And here is where we see the new covenant and what it's really all about. Colossians 2, 11 through 14. Paul says, in him also, that's in Jesus, you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. So remember, we're talking about spiritual things here. This is all spiritual. A circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism. Again, we're talking about a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. Paul is 100% talking spiritual. A spiritual circumcision, a spiritual baptism. You are buried with him through his death and burial and resurrection. 
in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. You see that? When you came up out of those waters, if you were baptized, I was baptized. I didn't become nothing new because of any of that water, because of getting dunked in water. That had nothing to do with the baptism. The powerful work of God, are you kidding me? The powerful working of God, getting dunked in water, anyone can do that. And frankly, anyone does all the time. They do it all the time in the flesh, and it means nothing. He's talking about a spiritual baptism here. A spiritual circumcision, a spiritual baptism. Let me start all over again. I was reading the flow. In Jesus also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he sets aside, nailing it to the cross. That's why he said on the cross, it's finished. He did it. It's finished. But see, having, past tense, forgiven us all our trespasses. That means he not only forgave and it was done, but he forgave all. So I know people try to squeak in there and say, well, yeah, I forgave, but you know, once you got saved, then you got to clean up your act. You got to stop sinning. This language says it clearly. We're all forgiven. Every single one of us and every single one of our sins is forgiven. But that's not salvation. It's to the powerful working of God through faith in that, through faith in the powerful working of God. Our forgiving other people is not what saves. There's a spiritual thing that happens when we forgive. Let's face it, folks. We forgive in the flesh. That's what we're doing in religion. We're commanded to do this. You are commanded to forgive. Now forgive that person that hurt you deeply and scarred you and wrecked your emotions in your emotional house and just tore you up. Now do it, okay? What else are you going to do? You're going to do it in your flesh. That's the only way you can do it under a command. But when you know you're forgiven, even though you won't forgive that person for the, the horrible thing they did to you, you still know you're forgiven. You still know you're loved. And then you start to receive that love and acceptance, that perfect love and acceptance from your God. That is what enables you to forgive. You have to have it first, folks. Forgiven is not something you get. It's something you are. So once you get that, you then you receive the Holy Spirit. That's what saves you. The Holy Spirit is what brings you alive. That's that resurrection. That's that real baptism. The baptism in the Spirit. The spirit, God just used the, the water one to illustrate something spiritual that was to come. That's why he said, John baptized you with water, but there's one that shall, shall baptize you in the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus. He baptized you a totally different baptism. And that is life. That is salvation. It's not you forgiving anyone. It's not even him forgiving you because he forgave the whole world. That's part of it. You got to be forgiven. That's why he didn't. He didn't ask your permission. He didn't give you a procedure to get forgiveness. He just forgave you. You're forgiven. Now worry about living your life with your God and just accept it. And don't worry about forgiving perfectly all the time because you can't do it anyway. If that's it, we're all doomed. It's never going to happen. That's why he made it clear. Be merciful as your father in heaven. Be Just be like God and everything will be fine. Or accept the gift of God, which is his perfection. In Jesus name. Amen.